Hi dear students you are welcome in this tutorial dear students i hope you are doing well and please take care of yourself and your family don't go out of the home without any reason or urgent work or urgent task because the situation is very dangerous as we all know that we are suffering from the great danger of pandemic covid 19 so dear participants be aware and please take care of yourself and your family and we hope that this will over very soon and we will gather again in our colleges and schools so uh, let's hope for that now dear participants uh, this is hash 13 video in the history of english literature and in this video we are going to talk about puritan age part 3 and we have here very special john dunn a very uh, special metaphysical poet so dear students uh, in this video we are going to have discussion on life of john dunn uh, his major works his famous poetry and the place of john dunn in whole history of english literature so let's start the video i have prepared for you a powerpoint presentation so that it will be very easy to understand about john dunn and i hope this will be not a longer video in this series so let's get on the screen so dear students here uh, you can see hash 13 history of english literature puritan age part 3 1620 to 1660 this uh, age is very important in the history of english literature because it has paved the way for further writers and here we have special john dunn for the discussion 1573 to 1631 so uh, here we will start with the life of john dunn you can see uh, here on the screen that john dunn was born in london and uh, he belonged to a very rich family in those days his father was an iron merchant and his mother also came from a wealthy family the family of haywoods and thomas moore's family as we know about this haywoods and thomas moore uh, who were the great literary persons in those days and the mother of john dunn belonged to their uh, this family so both his father and mother was catholic in religion now uh, next when we look at the catholicism and the religion practiced by john dunn uh, we find that he has to pay the price of that catholicism uh, friends here uh, he was rejected from oxford and cambridge universities on the basis of his religion because he belonged to catholic religion and in those days there were very uh, restrictions on these uh, religious people and hence in oxford and cambridge the religion was very important and hence uh, john dunn was rejected from uh, the entry of uh, uh, in these universities prestigious universities uh, and he has to study law and he studied law in lincoln's inn there he studied religion there also he studied philosophy and he took interest in the basic teachings basic preachings of religion and he uh, studied many kinds of religion in that uh, his uh, years of study and meanwhile he found some time and wrote poetry and when he returned from this study he shared his wealth in needy people particularly in catholic people so this was the uh, very initial days of john dunn next uh, he went on expeditions if you look at the character or personality of john dunn you will find that he is the mixture of many things for example here we have uh, some critics say that a cynical john dunn obscure john dunn and a mystic john dunn in the same way in his life also he behaved in such a way for example here we have his expeditions of essex in 1596 and 1597 he uh, went on sea for these expeditions and spent a lot of time there and on the sea also he could find time to write poetry and we have his initial poetries like the storm and the calm so these uh, were his famous poetry which he composed in his initial days when he returned from these expeditions from the sea we find that he became the secretary to lord egerton a very wealthy person and a politically strong person lord egerton then what happens in his life is very curious and uh, is very important there he fell in love 
with Lord Egerton's niece called Anne Moore and this relationship has changed his life. Actually both Anne Moore and John Dunn eloped from there and they married and uh, this married marriage was not approved by the family of Lord Egerton or Sir George Moore and uh, he was cast into prison. He had to spend many days in the prison. When he came out of prison, his wanderings and uh, all these things brought him poverty and again he had to spend many days in poverty. But soon uh, Sir George Moore, who is uh, his father-in-law, forgave him and uh, his uh, daughter Anne Moore and his uh, father, Anne Moore's father, uh, started some allowances for his daughter or for Anne Moore. But in 1611, she died and after her death, he, her allowances, the allowances of which received by the Dunn family was stopped and again Dunn has to face severe poverty with his seven children. He had seven children and again his days were uh, went into the grim poverty. But uh, students, John Dunn was an intellectual figure in those days because he studied a lot and he had some finest skills in poetry. Uh, in writing, in oratory and soon he became a preacher after uh, these uh, allowances had been stopped and when he became preacher he became one of the very strong preachers in England in those days. He was recognized by many people and soon after a few years he became the Dean of St. Paul's Cathedral in London. A very prestigious uh, position he acquired based on his intellectual capacity, based on his intellectual power and that is the power of John Dunn. Though many critics consider him mystic Dunn or uh, think that he is an obscure figure in English literature, but friends, he was a man of intellect and hence he could rose from his poverty again to a prosperous uh, days. Now uh, we have here a few lines from his poem The Undertaking and based on this line we can judge his character or his personality. Let's read these lines. Here we have, I have done braver things than all the worthies did and yet a braver than doth spring which is to keep that hide. Now it's very simple from these lines we can understand that he said in these lines that he did many braver things than all the worthies did. So he did so many things, great things, but in those days which had not been done by worthy people in those days like poets and uh, other uh, famous people or other intellectual people and he said that I did all these things. Actually he is referring to the poets of Elizabethan period and he is revolting against the style of those poets, the writings of those poets in Elizabethan age and hence he is writing here like I have done braver things. So he is uh, saying that what he did and again he says that and yet a braver thence doth spring and again these uh, things will come before or come in front of the people in front of the audience which is to keep that hid and he consciously said that many of my things had been hidden and still they are not recognized by the people. So uh, in these lines he just uh, sharing his views and through these views we can judge his character or his personality. Now dear students uh, let's move to his famous poems. We have his many famous poems as we all know that though Dunn is not uh, right now studied uh, in uh, many colleges or in many universities but still there are some uh, poems who are, which are very famous. Here we have the very first The Good Morrow, uh, second song The Sunday Rising, then we have Canonization, then we have number five Valediction Forbidden Morning. Now friends this poem had been written in the memory of his wife uh, Anne Moore when she died. Valediction Forbidding Morning is the poem written uh, to uh, mourn the death of his wife and more. Next we have Trepidation of the Spears, The Ecstasy, The Relic, This is my place, Last Scene. This poem is also important because here we find 
uh, his imagination flourished you can find the very title very suggestive here this is my place last scene and in that poem he imagined his death and he wrote about that his feeling of heaven and his feeling of hell so this poem also is important to know the life of john dunn and his imagination and the last here we have at the round earth imagined corners now friends these all poems are very famous and there are so many poems if you uh, find the collection called songs in songs there are uh, more than 55 poems and all poems are very famous now friends uh, we are moving to the last part of our tutorial that is his place in history of english literature now as we talked about uh, the life of john dunn and then we talked about his poems his poems are important still today and there are many universities many colleges which prescribe his poems for the syllabus now friends uh, he is known as metaphysical poet how we can place him in the history of english literature very first thing is that he is metaphysical poet friends john dryden actually used a word metaphysics regarding john dunn and later this word is con confirmed or the term metaphysical poetry is used by uh, dr samuel johnson actually john dryden did not praise dunn but he condemns in a way dunn and he says that he is metaphysics just he is referring to the mysticism of john dunn or obscurity of john dunn and hence when the term is applied by dr johnson to john dunn he became the first poet in metaphysical school of poetry so in his poetry second point here we have we find wit his poems are witty which are filled with conceits and imagery if you remember that uh, he generally is known as the poet of love and we find the imagery different kinds of imagery for example we have the imagery of uh, compass the two poles the two lovers the two points of compass as two lovers so this kind of imagery we find in his poetry and he is a witty poet we have his distinct style this uh, writing style of uh, john dunn is distinct for example we find couplets in his poems and later uh, alexander pope robert browning adopted his couplets for their poems and they composed famous poems and the last point here we have obscurity now as we have already talked that john dunn is known as an obscure poet sometimes a mystic poet but when we study john dunn in detail we find that there is no any obscurity there is no any mysticism in his poetry but the conceits and images sometimes make us feel so now friends this is all about john dunn we talked about the life of john dunn we talked about his famous poems and now we talked about his place in history of english literature remember these points you will understand john dunn so this is all about this part we will meet in the next part till watch videos on literature simply share this video like this video and also subscribe to literature simply and press the bell notification icon for updates